Hello folks, and a massive, massive thank you to Howard. Not me, another Howard, can you believe it? Yes, there's another Howard. And he kindly sent me a Spectrum 48K with the rubber keyboard. Here it is folks, the Sinclair ZX Spectrum 48K from Howard. And it's got a little note on it, a little post-it note that says, check the polarity, I may be wrong, but I seem to recall it's nine volts and it's got a positive outside barrel jack connection and a negative center pin from H with a little smiley face. So I've found the appropriate barrel jack. Oh, there it is, happy days. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna modify it so that it produces composite out and it fits and it works with this magnificent little August TV. It's almost looking like a ZX Spectrum laptop. And by the time we're done with this, hopefully it should all be battery powered. It'll be like a little tiny laptop. So that'll be fun. Let's get into it. Let's plug this ZX Spectrum into the Diamante monitor. <laughs> this was a mistake that my parents bought from John Lewis's. But I've got to be honest, it's absolutely magnificent. On the side of this Diamante monitor, it's got all of the different inputs that you might even possibly consider to have. It's got SCAR, it's got S-Video, it's got Composite, it's got a PCM CIA slot, it's got RF in, it's got VGA, it's got HDMI, everything you need. And, and so that's what makes this monitor really useful. And that's sort of part of the reason why why I'm keeping it and the fact that it has diamantes around all of the outside of it. How cool is that? I've had a bit of a furkle through my stack of various different power supplies and I found this and great news it's a switching power supply and it's got a nine volt DC output on it at one and a half amps. That should be more than enough to power the spectrum. Unfortunately the polarity is the wrong way around. We'll get that sorted in a heartbeat with a soldering iron. The soldering iron we're going to use today in my soldering iron kit is powered by an old laptop power supply and it's a TS100 soldering iron. I absolutely adore this TS100. So let's get that plugged in and let's get this barrel jack soldered up to the power supply and then we can plug in the spectrum and see what happens. Another great bit of rather fetching news is this little barrel jack that's already on the power supply actually fits, fits nicely into the ZX Spectrum. All we've got to do is reverse the polarity. Where should we do that? Let's do it here in the middle of the cable. That'll be nice and easy. Whacker whacker, chomp, chomp. <laughs> there we go. Let's get this cable sorted out. A little bit of heat shrink. Always make sure you do a reasonable job of sorting out a power supply, just in case things short out. A little bit of heat shrink going on here. We'll get this soldered up. And here it is, the TS100 soldering iron. Look at this. Rising quickly up to temperature. I have mine set to about 300 degrees, which I find works an absolute treat. Oh, 330. Little bit hot maybe, but that'll do the trick. Finger burning. There we go. Heat shrink, heat shrink. And a big lump of heat shrink. There we go. Nice. We have successfully reversed the polarity of the switching power supply. We're almost at the moment of truth. I just wanted to double check that the outside is positive and the inside is negative. And yes, indeed, the inside is negative. That's 9.63 volts. That's fantastic. Right, let's plug it in to the spectrum and see what happens. So the TV's on and ready to receive a signal. Here we go. Oh, happy days. That looks spectrum-esque. A little bit of noise coming from the telly, but sadly, nothing. Oh no, <laughs> looks like we're going to have to fix this thing. I've never been inside one of these before. <laughs> Let's get some screws out and see what it looks like in there. I'm sure it's going to be full of plated through hole components, and I know it's got a Zilog Z80 in it. 
Come on, let's get in there. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> that's interesting. And these ribbon cables don't appear to be in the greatest of shape. Let's have a look at the PCB itself. So here's the ULA chip. Um, over here, I believe this is RAM. RAM, Oki, Japanese, RAM. And then we've got a speaker in the corner. Yes, good evening, Mr. Speaker. And this is the power supply section here. So we've got the modulator, the TV modulator here, made in Malaysia. We've got the Ferranti ULA here. There it is, DZ80C, so that's the Z80 CPU. <laughs> it looks a mess. It's like someone's just opened the hood on your vehicle and said, yep, yeah, you got a head gasket gone. Uh, yeah, I think we need to do some serious work. I'm sure that people sell keyboard flexies on eBay. So I put a little post out on Twitter. I said, where do we get these keyboards from? And Break Into Program very kindly recommended this site here. And having had a quick look at the site, husband and wife team, it looks like they've got what we need. Let's see if we can order it. Oh, I really... How do you get this off? Just feels like it's... I, I tell you what, if I was a kid, I'd lose patience and I'd pull it off and that would just ruin it. With the help of fire. Thank you, fire. Basket of logs. A sheepskin rug. <laughs> and a ZX Spectrum. We're sitting in front of the fire, just trying to warm this up a little bit. Where are we at with temperature? 58 degrees centigrade. I reckon that's probably enough. Let's see if that comes off now. Please come off, please come off, please come off. Oh yeah. That sounded, that sort of sounded slightly promising. Oh, careful now. And even, oh, there we go. I know it looks a bit warped. Don't panic. So here it is. <laughs> the rubberized keyboard and aluminium fascia plate removed. And here is the old, rather fragile, snappy keyboard ribbon cable membrane. Great news. In the post today, it's got a full set of instructions with it. It's even got a little tool which gives you the ability to be able to pry that aluminium keyboard cover off and it recommends using a hairdryer instead of a fire like I did. And look at this, absolutely beautiful. And uh, what's interesting is it's made by Tesla. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but it has on the ribbon cable got Tesla written on it. But yeah, absolutely fantastic. Very, very, very detailed set of instructions. And this has come from retroleum.co.uk. £11, including delivery. How is that even possible? Look at it. Absolutely fabulous. Right, let's get this installed. All we should have to do is just carefully poke this through there and there and boom look at that done dusted keyboard in place and now we need to carefully glue that aluminium surround back in place ah oh, yes indeed now we've got two decent ribbon cables that will link up to our pcb here is our pcb and the first thing I've done is I've used a multi-tester just to pop in here and check the voltages are correct. And actually the best way to do that, uh, most of the voltages come down here on to IC6, which is this little guy right here. And you can check the plus 5 volts, the uh, minus 5 volts and the plus 12 volt supply. Now, there is clearly some kind of a problem. Not sure what it is yet. I need to recap this PCB. I'm getting quite a lot of advice and guidance from Twitter, which is fabulous. There's a wonderful retro community on Twitter. So I popped a little fault video out on Twitter. I've got some 
very interesting responses. All good stuff, really, apart from Derek Findas, of course. I'm just kidding, Derek. Hello, mate. Um, <laughs> but yeah, some people are suggesting um, maybe a bad upper RAM uh, because the ULA and the lower RAM seems okay. And uh, more fun making it suggested that just go ahead and recap anyway. It might be the logic or the ROM. But the CPU looks fine because it's doing the black border and white screen thing. ZX Renew suggests go ahead and check the C27, the reset cap. And also Mark Fix's stuff has popped on and uh, put a couple of comments in as well. So fantastic. Thanks everybody for all of your help. I really appreciate it. I'm going to read through all of these comments thoroughly and we'll see if we can fix this ZX Spectrum 48K rubber keyboard. Having dug through my capacitor collection... I've now finally found all the appropriate components so that I can recap this PCB. Let's go ahead and do that job first. Well, that was quite interesting. Whilst unsoldering C47 here, a leg literally fell off of it. <laughs> Just fell off. And there we have it, folks, a whole set of new capacitators. Now, I have been a little bit naughty. I've replaced axial-style capacitors or coaxial-style capacitors with capacitors with the pins that just go in the same direction and bent the legs around a little bit and made sure that they're not going to short out and touch anything. The key question is, has it fixed it? I don't hold out too much hope because I think that's a ROM issue, a RAM issue. Nope, and we're still stuck, unfortunately, in the same situation. So, time to do more diagnostic work. All right, folks, I've been really struggling with this ZX Spectrum. <laughs> so, I couldn't help myself but buy yet another one. Um, well, actually, this one was a kindly donation from Howard, and this one is one that I've purchased on eBay uh, as working. And I've plugged it in, I've tested it, it does indeed work. It's a slightly different mod level PCB. This is one of the early issue 2 mod levels, and this one is an issue 3B mod level. Um, and clearly, this has had a little bit of work done already. Um, the ROM chip is socketed, and uh, a bunch of the RAM chips are also socketed. Uh, one thing I did have the ability to do was change out the ULA chip. So I've proved that this chip does exactly the same as the other chip in the other board. Basically what I've done is I've swapped those two ULA chips over and both boards do exactly the same thing that they used to. It's pointing towards a fault with some of the ROM here. Clearly we can see that a few of the a few of these have been replaced before. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put both of these units on soak test, as in I'm going to connect them up, turn them on. What I'll do then is I'll get an infrared thermometer and I'll look at some of these chips here and see if they're at different temperatures to the chips on here and see if that might give us an indication as to where the problem is with this naughty, naughty little unit. Hopefully you can see here... I can run my thermometer across this array of chips and they're all sitting at around 22 degrees. Uh, then this set of chips here, very sort of similar, 23 degrees. This set of chips at the top here, 23, 24 degrees. The ULA tends to run a little bit hot, closer to 40 degrees, 47 in some places, 45, and the the processor is about 30 degrees, and the ROM is about 26 degrees. So that is all very similar to the results that we get on this board here. That ULA really does run quite hot. But yeah, anyway, there's nothing in here that's sort of really jumping out and saying there's a specific problem with the temperature of any one of those chips when you compare it to this PCB here. So that's been unsuccessful. <laughs> so the next part of the mission then is to buy sockets for all of the RAM chips on this board and sockets for all of the RAM chips on this board so that we can start interchanging chips and figuring out 
which chip, which RAM chip it is on here that's died. Ah, well, I think that's going to be a video for another week. So if anybody's got any bright ideas as to how I might be able to fix this without doing a whole hell of a lot of soldering work, I'd be very happy to hear from you in the comments section. And any other thoughts that you might have about this in the comments section. In the meantime, let me just quickly show you what a working ZX Spectrum looks like. All right, so this is what a working ZX Spectrum should do when you plug it in. Bonk. And there we go, down in the bottom left hand corner, it says 1982 Sinclair Research Limited. If we now unplug the aerial connector and stuff it into this unit here, we'll go ahead and connect up the power to the broken unit. Very similar. Ooh. Has a few goes at trying to boot up, but we don't get Sinclair Research written in the bottom left hand corner just a gray screen <laughs> okay peeps thanks ever so much for watching as always don't forget to hit that thumbs up button subscribe if you haven't already and with a little bit of luck you'll see me doing a lot of soldering work in a future video all right thanks for watching take care have a wonderful wonderful week and weekend cheers and beers folks bye for now